Hey, I'm Scott, and I am an American in Bangkok. In this video, I am going to discuss why one fed-up American expat decided to leave Thailand. For years, Thailand's immigration department has been scrutinized by expats. One of the most common objectives to how Thai immigration handles foreigners, expats, is to simply state they don't want foreigners here. They want us to leave. They only want our money. But really, why else would they want you here? To brag about how many people want to move here and live here and call Thailand a home? It's business, plain and simple. And if you have what they consider to be enough money to exist here, to live here, then they want you here. If you don't, then they don't want you here. They don't want foreigners costing their government money. They want foreigners here, expats here, spending money, which is fair enough. But with every change to the immigration system, with every proposal, with every new law passed, expats question, is it all too much? Is it still worth it? Now, Thailand is a fast emerging country and their aspiration is to go from upper middle income to high income uh, to a high e income economy by 2037 uh, for better or worse the Thai government is attempting to separate itself and its backpacker past from its desired modern future and Bali and several other locations are doing the same I say for better or worse because I'm not so sure that forgetting backpackers the people who uh, some of the people who really got Thailand to where it is today, I'm not sure that's a good move uh, because these backpackers are people who will invest in Thailand or who are investing in Thailand and who are future expats. But if you had free reign of Thailand's immigration department, how would you change it? What would you do differently? So the other day I was reading and I came across a question of someone who was thinking of moving to Thailand and the answer was given by a longtime American expat who was leaving the country to go back home. And the question was, why are so many expats leaving Thailand? Before I start, if you really think about it, the question is kind of flawed from the get-go because expats come and go for any number of reasons, countless reasons. But let me just give you his response to why he's le leaving and I'll chime in and at the end I'm going to tell you what I think is probably the biggest reason why expats go back home and I don't think that it's money although money is important and it's one of the things uh, I don't think that that's what it is so uh, stay with me so he says I can only answer you for myself and I'm certain others will disagree and have their own and different reasons. I've lived in Thailand for 15 years and I'm now faced with having to leave the country where I intended to spend the rest of my life. My wife is Thai, my kids are Thai, I made an honest if only middling successful attempt to learn the language including teaching myself to read and write. So he sounds much like me, only I've been here twice as long as he has. I created a company years ago to ensure I could work legally and pay taxes honestly. I've always done my utmost to stay within the law, to never overstay my visa, and to ensure my work permit is current and correct. My company works under permanent contract to another company because the convoluted arrangement is the only way everyone can work and remain entirely legal. However, the result is that every bot I earn comes from outside the country, and virtually every bot I spend is spent within the country. It's understandable, and that's kind of how I am, uh, but isn't that what countries want? They want money coming in, not money going out. It's not that I make staggering amounts of money, but if you put 1,000 expats like me together, that's a significant amount of pure income for the country. I invested heavily in my kids' education here to try and ensure they have a solid future with every intention of remaining here and growing old in a beautiful country. And it is a beautiful country in many ways. So don't be put off by these reasons, and you'll see why in a few moments here. Number one, I find that increasingly I am treated by the system as though I am virtually a criminal. Well, I would say that in the United States... 
Many people feel like they are criminals there. They may be treated like a criminal there. I don't know. Uh, but I, that's what I think. And really here, I don't feel like I'm treated, treated like a criminal. I mean, once in a while, it's kind of like, don't you think that's overkill? But I don't really feel like I'm a criminal. Number two. After 15 years, I have no more rights or stability than someone who arrived a month ago. And that is mostly true. And I will say mostly because if he has a family here, he has a bit more sway than somebody who's just coming here, uh, you know, a month ago or some tourist or something like that. I do think there is a small difference. Number three, every year when I renew my visa, the restrictions are tighter and tighter in my own country. If you qualify for a residency, that's it. You don't need to qualify repeatedly and meet the tougher requirements every year. Okay, I don't know, but it happens every year to where there are more and more and more restrictions. It may feel that way. It may seem this way. They are trying to move forward, not backwards. They are trying to garner better people in their country. I do think he's got a point here. In my own country, if you qualify for a residency, that's it. You don't have to qualify repeatedly. I don't know why they do this, and that is a bit of a downer. I don't know, but this one item would make me go back home, though. Number four, I am required to report to immigration every three months and confirm that I'm still here. Granted, there is an online way to do it, but only it only ever works half the time, so this means half a day of work and a trip to the immigration office. He's referring to the 90-day report, and that is a pain in the neck, although you can do it online, and generally if there's a problem, it's either they have a problem with the system, which happens occasionally, and that means everyone is affected, or you got to change browsers. That is something that you might want to check. Um, but it is a pain in the neck, and I don't understand it, but it, again, it's not going to make me go back home, and I don't think many people are going to say, that's it, I've had it, i got to do a 90-day report, I'm going back home. Number five, if I'm staying from home even one night, I must then immediately go to the immigration office the next day with the owner of the house to report that I am still me and I am back doing exactly what I was doing 48 hours ago. He's referring to the TM30, and this... Uh, this message that he wrote, that his response was a little bit before the TM30 was eliminated. As of June 30th, 2020, landlords are no longer required to submit paperwork for the people that uh, live in their residence. So that's something. But this was a bit of a, this was quite a bit of a pain in the neck. Uh, he goes on to say, the owner, owner of my house is a great guy, but he has businesses to run and can't be coming to immigration with me all the time. He signed power of attorney over to my wife so she can do it, but this means she has to take a day off from work to do this. Another day off of work for me and also one for her. Our landlord is an older woman who does not use the internet. I had to get her daughter to do this for me. And it was a hassle. And then you had to hope that she would do it right away. And was she busy? And, you know, uh, it, it's just, this was not something that anybody enjoyed. And I'm glad that it's gone, that they eliminated it. Uh, if you go into a hotel, the hotel will do this automatically. But if you're living in a house or an apartment or something like that, you don't have to worry about it. You no longer have to. So number five is irrelevant. Number six, I'm tired of being charged 10 times as much as everyone else in my family when I go to visit a national park, even if I show my passport and work permit to prove that I live and work and pay taxes to support these parks. Hey, I don't particularly like the dual pricing. I would rather it was, you know, even Steven, but that's not how it is. And you can always say, I'm not going in, or you can just pay the money. You don't have to go, and there have been one or two occasions where I did not go in because I'm like, I'm not paying 400 baht for me, and you guys are 40 baht like for my wife and, say, 20 baht for my kids. Uh, you know, it's ridiculous. So uh, I understand this point. Number seven, I am tired of having to send my wife to do basic shopping because when I walk in, the staff all find something more important to do and or the prices go up immediately. Now he speaks Thai. I don't know why this happens, 
Maybe it's his location. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe because he doesn't want to say anything. I don't know. But he says, I try to support the locals, but stop shopping at the market down the road when I went to buy pork and they charged me three times what they charged my wife. Now I shop at Tesco and support the big box stores that will put these guys out of business simply because Tesco doesn't steal from me. I believe a better word is not steal, but you could say cheat, although it's about making as much money as you can, and I don't think it's right that they charge you three times the price, but you ought to know the price, and you ought to be able to say to them, hey, it's not 90 baht, it's 30 baht. You know, really, if you speak Thai, you should be able to do that. And then if they're going to continue to charge more money, you just go, no, I don't want it. Sorry. All right, number eight. I'm tired of the useless political drama that goes nowhere and results in endless squabbles. People constantly grumble about having a military government, but when they have a, had a proper democracy, they couldn't deal with it. Well, I, I don't know why he's complaining about this. I don't know why this would cause him to go back home. Because if anything, it's kind of entertainment. And if someone gets into power that is really anti-foreigner and causes the country to have an anti-foreigner sentiment, then you leave. But that hasn't been the case. And while, you know, things may not always seem like they like foreigners, the people do generally like foreigners. Maybe the government has an attitude that is protective, overly protective, too protective. I can see that for sure. Uh, but I don't know what this would send me home. I mean, you know, really, I, I can't vote. He can't vote. We can't. Most people cannot vote here who are foreign, uh, who are expats. Most foreigners can't just come in here and start voting. It doesn't work that way. This is not America. Uh, number nine, I'm tired of this chopping and changing of the law so muddled and confusing that the immigration officials struggle to know what the law is today. We're told that retirees will have to maintain minimum amounts of health insurance. Then we're told, no, they won't. Will they? Won't they? What's next? Yeah, this is Thailand. T-I-T, -T, baby. This is Thailand. Um, and, you know, it can be frustrating, but I would say, I don't know, but maybe he has not learned the art of patience, the art of being Jai Yin Yen, of just going, my Ben Rai, you know. Um... Because, again, you cannot really do much about what's going on. Uh, a lot of people cried about the income affidavit issue with, uh, I think it was the American embassy and maybe one or two other embassies. Uh, you know, people, people are going to complain no matter what. This is definitely frustrating. But you have to have patience. If you're going to live in Thailand, you better learn the art of patience. And this is something I think... Being patient, learning Maip and Rai, learning Jai and Yen, oh, Sabai, Sabai, the whole Thai attitude, at least learning it somewhat, is very, very beneficial to your well-being here. It has been for me. Uh, number 10, I'm tired of situations such as immigration officers, officers coming to my workplace, struggling to find non-existing problems with my working documents, and then just demanding 10,000 baht or they will put me in prison. I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe he's somebody who likes to exaggerate. I don't know how often this has happened to him. But I know plenty of people in business that this doesn't happen to. I know a few who have been shook down by the police. And uh, most of them worked in the bar industry, the nightlife industry. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know what a situation with... This would put me off. If I was operating a legitimate business with my family, let's say that I had a coffee shop and it turned into a very prosperous coffee shop and somebody was coming in going, you're going to have to pay us a 50,000 baht every month or else we're going to throw you in jail. Yeah, that would kind of tick me off and I would start making plans to move elsewhere. So that one is something that uh, might send me back home quickly. Number 11, I'm tired of hearing later the same day how corruption is now non-existent. Most of all, it's the fact I've realized the rules do and always will change and the date they almost always say something will happen changes and usually to be more restrictive for foreigners. If I do retire here, there is absolutely no guarantee that the law will not change when I'm 85 and I will suddenly find myself at the age forced out of the country where I would by that time have lived for most of my life. So number 11 is I'm tired of hearing about corruption and how it's non-existent 
he's referring to with immigration. But if you know anything about Thailand, you know there's corruption and it varies in severity. Uh, you know, but like, are okay, so you're tired of hearing it. I'm tired of a lot of things. It's not going to send me back home, though. So I don't really relate to this one. Um, and I don't find it to be applicable to me or to most of my friends. Now, maybe this guy's got some big business. I don't know what the deal is, and I'm, I'm not going to find out. But uh, I think really what the one big reason is that people go back home is they can't handle the uncertainty. Yeah, money is one reason. Uh, you know, they get sick of all the red tape or whatever. But I think mainly it's, am I still going to be able to stay here? I've got all my stuff. I've, I'm, you know, I've, I've got a piece of land with my wife. We've got a nice house. And, oh, I don't know if I can stay. Well, generally, you're not going to have to worry about it. They're not going to change the law on you or they never have, at least so far. If you're a retiree and let's say at the time you were paying a four, putting 400,000 baht into the bank to show that you were a retiree and then they increased the amount to 800,000 baht they're not making the person who had a 400,000 baht visa that that was the requirement now have an 800,000 baht requirement that's not what they're doing they grandfather you okay and this has not changed and it's happened several times where they have made changes and the people who were already in the system at one particular level, as long as they continued unabated, then there was no change. Many people will say absolutely correctly, if you don't like it, then leave. They are dead right. It's not my country, and if I don't like it, then I should and will leave. Plan B. You know, you should have a vague plan B in place, somewhat in place. You need to have an idea. What do we do if this happens? What if? So to answer the question, these are the reasons why I'm leaving. I'm not asking Thailand to change, but I think if they don't, they will lose a large part of their expat community and with it, a lot of skilled labor that the country needs. You think they need them. If you know any, they may or may not though. If you know anything about the Thai government, you know that they are proud and whether or not they lose a portion of the skilled labor has absolutely nothing to do with what this guy thinks, what I think, what any other expat thinks. He's not in charge of the country. I'm not in charge of the country. This is all on the Thai government. It's up to them. So it's sink or swim, and they're the ones who will reap the benefits or they'll have to figure a way how to get out of their situation. But we have nothing to do with it. So why would you complain about it and bitch about it to the point where you're like, that's it, I'm going home. I, I don't see the reason. It's not your country. And none of these things on that list, aside from the corruption, would really make me go back home. I don't know why he's going back home, but I will say this. If you have a number of these things hit you smack dab in the face, an accumulation could make you go home. I will say that. If everything happens at once, you're like, that's it. I can't take it anymore. I'm going home. Anyway, that's all I have. I am Scott. I'm an American in Bangkok. Until next time, choke the leo, choke and my. That's good luck and see you later. I'll see you when I see you.